Okay, so we're back with more consolidation. Uh, chapter 3, consolidation, subsequent date uh, to date of acquisition. And we're moving on to the initial value method. So in previous presentation, we looked at the equity method, so you may want to refer back to that. Now we're looking at the initial value method. So the initial value method, we said uh, in a previous presentation that is gonna account for the consideration transfer at date of acquisition and nothing else on the investment and sub account on the balance sheet. And then for the income statement, we're only going to record our dividend income. So uh, very different from the equity method, uh, more of a, a cash flow centered uh, rather than accrual method uh, accounting. Um, so as we said before, the um, accounts that are going to be affected is going to be the investment account on the balance sheet. Uh, we have the income uh, that's going to be recognized on the parents from the subsidiary on the parents records. Uh, and then, of course, the parents retain earnings. So this is only on the parent side. What we're talking about here is just the parent records, the parents' financial statements. Uh, this does not affect the subsidiary. And it doesn't affect the consolidated totals because regardless of what method we're using, equity, initial value, partial equity, we're going to end up with the same consolidated totals. So again, we have our beloved five uh, consolidation entries. Consolidation entry S was to eliminate the subsidiaries and stockholders' equity accounts. Uh, that remains the same under the initial value method. Entry A was to adjust the fair values, um, the book values to fair values for assets and liabilities under the equity method that remains the same for initial value. The only differences are going to be entry I and D. Entry I was to eliminate the subsidiaries um, earnings, uh, income earnings on the subsidiary on the parent side. But for initial value method, uh, we only have dividend income, so the amounts will differ, but the entry will still be the same. Uh, and uh, the entry D we don't longer have because entry A will partially take care of that. Actually, totally will take care of that. And then we have entry E, which re, uh, it was the um, recording the amortization expense and or depreciation expense under the equity method. That treatment remains the same under the initial value method. Okay, so here we have uh, on the left hand side, we have parents, we have a history of the investment in some company account. Uh, we have that this uh, investment in some company account was initially, uh, we had the, the consideration transfer of 800,000 and date of acquisition. It's been increased by is um, some company's income decreased by some company's dividends. And then we have the amortization expense, which was calculated in a previous slide that remains the same year after year. So in terms of this uh, net income, less the amortization uh, has been uh, rolling over into Parrot's retained earnings. So under the equity method, we should have uh, accumulated 330,000 of net income from uh, the time of inception until uh, beginning 2020. Uh, and then we also have uh, our amortization and we're showing that here uh, for the three years beginning 2020. So our beginning retained earnings under the equity method should be 309,000. However, since we have been using, meaning Parrot had been using the initial value method, all we have recorded on our income statement year after year has been the dividend income. Okay, so this dividend. So what we have, or Parrot has at the beginning of re, uh, beginning retained earnings 2020, 
uh, in respect to this investment is 110 when it should be 309. Therefore, the retained earnings uh, is understated by this difference of 199,000. So remember we said that regardless of the method that we use, consolidated totals will be the same. We're going to have to do a little adjustment to retain earnings to bring everything back to equity method. Okay, so on the consolidation worksheet, here we have parent. Okay, so we're talking about parent. Parent is the parent. Parent gets the choice of selecting which method they want to use to account for its investment in Sun Company. And in this case, we're using initial value method. So under the initial value method, all we're recording is the dividend income on the income statement. Okay, this is only for 2020. Remember, this is an income statement account. So we have to close it at the end of the year. It would have reset to zero at the beginning of 2020. And so we have our dividend here. And then in terms of our balance sheet, Parrot has an investment in Sun Company, and we're only showing the acquisition price. Whatever amount Parrot paid to acquire Sun Company's um, uh, control over this company, in this case 100%, back on January 1st, 2017. And so we're showing that here. So... All the other entries, we said they were going to be the same. So we have our entry S, which eliminates um, some company's equity. Okay. So under consolidated totals, we continue to report uh, the parents. Okay. Ending balances um, for our entry A. Uh, we have that we still have to adjust uh, the assets in this case uh, to fair market value. So we had the trademarks. We already talked about how did we calculate this 91,000 for patented technology. Uh, so you may want to refer back to the previous presentation and the same thing for equipment, this 12,000 right here. Which, which has to do less the depreciation and amortization. And then we have our goodwill. So that entry remains the same. Uh, entry S remains the same. And uh, our entry E remains the same, right? So we have our depreciation expense, our amortization, our credit to depreciation because the equipment was overstated. So that remained the same. Now, Let's focus on what has changed. So our entry I, the amount in entry I has changed, uh, but entry I remains the same uh, except for the credit. Okay, so we're going to debit whatever amount we have here under dividend income. It all pertains to some company, so we need to wipe that out. So we're going to debit that. And then the credit is going to go to dividends, right? So before we used to have under the equity method an entry D, we don't have that here because we're already taking care of that with entry I. Okay, so entry D disappeared. And now we have this new entry C, okay, new entry C, which has to do with the retained earnings adjustment. We said that Parrot's retained earnings is understated under the initial value method in comparison to the equity method. And so we're going to need to increase this. So we're crediting. We're going to need to increase it by this $199,000 difference that we calculated in the previous slide. Okay. So under whether we use the equity method, initial value method, or partial equity method, the re beginning retained earnings should tie to uh, in all for all three methods. And so this concludes our presentation on initial value method.